dancing steel root. Yellow Dancing Root by Steve Tobin of Welded Steel. This is another of the vibrant steel sculptures in the Dancing Root series. The bright yellow enhances the playful nature of the impression of motion created by the welded steel. Steve Tobin's Intertwined Exploring Nature's Networks. This exhibition features pieces from several series including modernist steel roots, unearthed bronze roots, stainless steel clouds and bronze and steel nests with magical eggs, all of which dramatically capture the unseen power of the natural world while celebrating the importance of the systems that give life to the garden's tropical, subtropical and arid collections. Well known for his Trinity Route 911 memorial sculpture, tribute to the victims of the World Trade Center attack in Lower Manhattan, Steve Tobin is a prolific sculptor whose artist's eye and rigorous scientific mind have led to diverse monumental artworks in steel, cast bronze, ceramic and glass that push the limits of every medium he has touched. From metal castings of trees' vast root systems to towering termite mounds cast on-site in West Africa to waterfalls made of millions of glass capillary tubed or steel rods miraculously springing from ceilings, Tobin's dynamic site-specific sculptures and key smaller works and installations are exhibited around the world yet rarely seen together. <clears throat> Steel Root 2010 The placement of pieces in the Houston Botanic Garden was a collaborative process that involved the artist himself as well as the garden's president and director of horticulture. The exhibition is truly intertwined with the landscape of the garden and while pieces will eventually travel on to other gardens, no two exhibitions will be the same as a result of this unique interplay. <laughs> Steel Route 2011 of Welded Steel. Three massive root shaped sculptures in bright scarlet intertwine to create the centerpiece sculpture of the exhibition. The sculpture has been carefully dropped into place to preserve the wildflower field in which it's set. One of the primary wildflowers seeded in this area is the famous Texas state flower. Lupinus texanus or the blue bonnet. Okay, Squeezes of cast bronze. These sculptures are, as their name suggests, developed from shapes created by the artist's hand applying pressure to a soft medium. The scale has been enlarged to create the final casting.
very lovely colour, which I think is copper. I like that one. Sun comes out. Very, very creative. Mm. Freestanding, too. Once again. Mm. I love how it's put in the garden like that. Wow, it says here, plants in this bed were chosen to complement the artwork and not a part of the culinary collection. Wow. Romeo and Juliet, 2003, of cast bronze. The artist was inspired to create this piece when he observed two trees that had fallen on a river bank. The exposed roots had grown, reaching toward each other, and the tree canopies finally became connected in their deaths. Romeo and Juliet represent a timeless story of love, pulling two families together into a relationship. This piece connects that classic tale to the interconnectedness of all organisms. The reaching roots exposed in the air are missing a key element of the communication used by roots underground, fungi. Research has shown that trees do communicate through roots using their symbiotic relationship with fungi to share nutrients and chemical messages in communal groups in forest settings. Aztec rock. Mm. These are pretty, whatever they are. Oh, you're trying to identify it? Oh, good idea.
Yeah. This one has water in it as well. I haven't noticed that. in this one today again.
It's fabulous. huge and somehow imposing and so metallic and yet organic. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, you're quite, right. Quite tall, I think. It was. It was all very tall. Yeah. Wow. Earth Bronze, 1997, of Cast Bronze. To create his Earth Bronze series, artist Steve Tobin played with the concept of collage as it occurs naturally in wild spaces. Temperate and tropical forest floors are home to an abundance of growing as well as decaying plant material in an ongoing regenerative cycle. This piece weighs 1,000 pounds. The patina colouring took 12 weeks to complete. The plant material featured in this work came from the forests of Pennsylvania. Is that a little cacti? It is adorable. So is the cacti. Oh, wow. This is nice. These, they look so pretty in the sun. Eagle's Nest. Another piece in the Nest series, the Eagle's Nest invites visitors to imagine the baby bird sheltered inside the egg by identifying the bird type in the title. Developing chicks need large amounts of protein for the rapid growth they experience in a short amount of time. By far the best way to get the nutrition they need is from caterpillars. Caterpillars are soft, squishy, easily digestible and deliver the baby the right proteins, fats 
and carotenoids for healthy development. While baby birds can also feed on other insects and seeds, most need to heat hundreds of caterpillars a day. If you want to help birds in the wild, choose plants that support several species of caterpillars. Yeah, I really like these eggs. They're pretty. Tornado nest. that one. Butterfly. So what are we looking at next? We got some over there. The giant one? Yeah. Tornado nest, and it's off to the side. Big guy. Mm, it's a different color, more golden. Mm. Bronze nest. Visitors can see themselves reflected in the shining metal of the egg in this piece. The sculpture is an invitation to see oneself nested in nature. That's your kind of awesome. Bronze, bronze nest. Mm -hmm. Cast bronze and stainless steel. Wow. That's awesome. I really like that one. Me too. Oh, what did we miss? Yeah, these little ones? I did miss these little ones. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> this 
just gonna be winning. Okay, well that was nests. And it was really great, my favourite so far. Next we have um, syntax, which is really left. Syntax 2005 of cast and welded bronze. Inspiration for the Syntax series came to artist Steve Tobin when he was in the process of melting down bronze letters and noted the shapes as the letter joined before completely melting away. This piece took 2,000 hours to make. As with all the works in this exhibition, Viewers are invited to apply their own interpretations to the sculpture. That's awesome. Head in the clouds. Gee, that corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gee, she thinks. These are my favorite parts of the gardens, these ones. Uh, I think it's over there. Head in the Clouds, 2020, of hammered steel. The sky in Houston is incredibly dynamic, with storms rolling in from the Gulf of Mexico and off the northern plains in all seasons. Weather and climate play an important role in the life of the garden, and the horticulture teamwork year-round to help plants thrive in conditions that may not be their preferred or native setting.
The sighting of this work in the ornamental grasses of the savannah is meant to provide visitors an opportunity to feel a part of the great Texas skyscape. All very similar but different. There's a flat bottom, there's a round. Which one unique? Bronze Root. This work is comprised of 200 pieces of cast bronze which were formed from wax moulds of actual root structures. From the human perspective, trees and tree roots seem like they are not moving. But in reality, drilling, mining, searching and growing actions are all occurring at the tip of the root. The midroot is constantly expanding, collecting nutrients and fighting infection. Trees use locomotion, pressurization and the training of microbial organisms to maintain constant activity. Trees are always in motion. You're invited to stop, sway and consider this movement.
golden barrel cactus. He's so cute. They are my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Super cute. Let's walk around these gardens so once we've admired the uh, art. White dancing root of welded steel. While sometimes set in pairs, this dancing root appears to be a single form. The bright white of the steel reflects the light bark of many of the deciduous trees in the woodland glade. Ten, like those others. I like the way that one curves up. Pretty. Which is odd because they're roots, so that one wouldn't normally head up like that. Yeah. You can see the trunk. Stands out. Different. Yeah. So that's why they're dancing. Mm. Twisties. Twisties is a collection of liquid like lines of metal, some twirling, twisting, and spiraling in a deep yellow. Though each form is slender on its own, the group collectively evokes colonies of vibrant plants reaching sunward. Around here. Of the bamboo. Bamboo two thousand and nine. This piece is modelled after a special type of bamboo, the clumping variety. Broadly speaking, there are two types of bamboo, the running varieties and the clumping varieties. The running varieties seed an underground branch outward from an original base. This spearheaded rhizome can travel indefinitely through the soil, periodically sending up new leafing shoots. Clumping bamboo does have an underground branch, in this case only travelling two or three inches before breaking the surface of the soil and making a new shoot. Clumping bamboo is noted to grow in pads, a dense tangle of bamboo branches just under the surface spreading four to six inches each year. Some giant timber bamboo pads are as wide as 35 feet. Ah! 
Cool. All the little winding paths in the old garden. round to the box cactus. Chihuahuan beehive.
Bronze and stainless steel. Termite Hill, 1998, of cast bronze. The Termite Hill series are cast from actual termite hills located in Ghana in West Africa. The hills themselves were empty at the time artist Steve Tobin worked with local teams to make rubber casting of the hills. These were then shipped to the artist's studio in Pennsylvania to enable the artist to make the cast bronze sculptures. While termites have earned a bad reputation in human societies, the world would not be the same without them. Thanks to symbiotic organisms in their gut, termites are one of the only animals able to digest cellulose in wood and break it down, adding crucial nutrients to the soil. Termites also feed on fungi, leaf litter, even dung. Their feeding behavior, in conjunction with their tunneling behavior, enrich and aerate the soil, making them some of the Earth's most important decomposers. Yeah, these gates. Yeah, they're really pretty, aren't they? <laughs> Wheeling, oh, black vulture, turkey vulture. Nice. Come sit down. I'll get some water. Nice water. So many. 